To better understand these concepts, I want to start with an analogy. Suppose that there are two groups of people in a party. The people on the left are assigned to make a friendship with the people on the right. The people in this group are asked to either make friends with one person or do nothing. But if they want to start talking to someone, they first need to make sure that the person is alone. This leads to a group of people who are happy because they have made new friends and also some unhappy people because there is a person who is not willing to socialize with others. This is the second group. Again, the people on the left are assigned to meet a person, no matter the person is alone or talking to a couple of people. The important thing is that they have to start talking to someone. Some people find just one friend, but there are also some people on the right who find more than one friend. The last group is the mixture of the previous rules for making friends. Everyone has to make a connection, but if the person on the right is alone, in this case, everyone feels the same. Or do they? This might be a really bad example to start a mathematical concept with, but the point is that these three concepts, injectivity, surjectivity, and bijectivity, are about the connections between the two sets of people in this example, not the people themselves. So let's get rid of this party example and explore these concepts in a different framework. The first question you might consider thinking about is this. What do we use these concepts for? We are going to use these concepts for mappings or transformations, or in other words, how two sets A and B are connected. Meaning that if we define a kind of rule for the elements of set A, how do they connect to the elements of the set B on the right? We can show the elements of the set on the left using A1, A2, and so on, and also the elements of the set B using B1, B2, and so on. You might want to know about the etymology of these words, and I think it really helps. The root ject comes from a Latin word and means to throw, like the people on the left who were throwing themselves to the people on the right. This prefix means into, this one means onto or over, and this one means a two-way connection. This kind of mapping is also called one-to-one, -one, suggesting that one element on the left can only go to one element on the right. This kind of mapping is called onto, suggesting that elements on the left throw themselves onto the elements on the right. And finally, if a mapping is one-to-one -one and also onto, we can say that there is a two-way connection and the rule can be inverse. That's why we can define an inverse if the mapping is bijective. So let's get more formal. We defined a mapping or a transformation from a set A to another set B. The mapping is called injective if for every two elements in A, if we map them to an element in B, it forces the two elements to be the same. So if you find an element in B that is the transformation of two distinct elements of A, the mapping is not injective. A mapping is surjective if for every element in B, there exists an element in set A, such that if we transform it, it gives the element in set B. In other words, we want to make sure that for every element in B, there exists an element in A that, when mapped, gives us this element in B. And finally, a mapping is bijective if for every element in set B, there exists only one element in set A, so that its mapping gives us the element in set B. This symbol means for every, this one means there is or there exists, meaning that it can be more than one. And this one means there is only one. For linear transformations that we deal with in linear algebra, we deal with vector spaces instead of just sets. And a linear transformation is a kind of transformation that preserves vector addition and scalar multiplication. I have thoroughly talked about these concepts in previous videos on this playlist. Now, let's see some examples. Consider this transformation from r squared to r cubed. These are two vector spaces and their elements can be denoted by two-dimensional and three-dimensional column matrices. This mapping or transformation changes this 2D vector into a three-dimensional one for which the last number is zero. We can also show this transformation by this expression. It gets two real numbers and maps them 
to an array of three real numbers with the third number to be fixed and zero. Visually speaking, we are taking a 2D plane into a 3D space. So let's check if it is injective. To do so, we need to start with this expression. We take two different vectors from the 2D vector space and transform them. For the map to be injective, we must find these two 2D vectors to be the same. By doing the transformation using the expression above, we find that for every two vectors, their mapped versions are the same. So this mapping is injective. What about surjectivity? As an example, you can simply verify that there doesn't exist a vector in our 2D vector space such that its mapping gives this specific vector in the 3D vector space. So this is a sad and lonely person without any friends in our 3D vector space, but it's not his or her fault, it's because of the rules. So this transformation is not surjective and of course not bijective, which needs both injectivity and surjectivity. Our next example is from a higher 3D dimension to a lower 2D dimension. The two vectors are mapped using this expression. It just takes a 3D vector and eliminates the third number, which leads to a reduction in the dimension. Pay attention to that. It is not a projection on a plane. It is literally reducing a dimension of the space. Let's check if it is injective. If we take these two distinct vectors in the 3D space, they give the same result. It means that two different elements of the first set are mapped to one element on the right. So in a more formal way, we can say that there exist two elements in the 3D vector space such that even if their transformations are the same, they're different vectors. And this violates injectivity. To check whether it is a surjective, we can verify that for every 2D vector you choose from the right, we can find at least one three-dimensional vector such that when mapped gives us this specific vector. In fact, in this example, for every element in the two-dimensional space, we can find infinite number of vectors that when mapped, give this vector in two dimensions. So this is an example of a surjective mapping, but still not bijective. Our last example is a mapping from two-dimensional vector space to the same vector space. This transformation takes a vector and changes it like this, which is geometrically speaking, a 90 degree rotation on a 2D plane. To check if it is injective, we can take two different vectors and rotate them. And for being injective, we expect them to be the same if the rotation is the same. Based on the last term, we can conclude that for every two vectors, if we rotate them and get the same result, the two vectors are the same vector and not different ones. So this transformation is injective. What about being surjective? If we take an arbitrary vector denoted by two real numbers x prime and y prime, and it is a rotated vector from another vector x and y, we get this expression. So x has to be y prime and y has to be minus x prime. And it suggests that for every two arbitrary real numbers y prime and x prime, we can write this expression. As a result, we can conclude that for every vector in the vector space, there exists a vector in the same space, so that when we transform it, we get the desired vector. And it shows that this transformation is surjective. Finally, we have found a transformation that is bijective, meaning that it is injective and surjective at the same time.